Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. called The Man Who Used His Head. And you might say, that's not extraordinary. We all must use our heads, civilian or military. However, and this is a big however, our hero in today's story does a bit of fancy thinking. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, one of the most important members of democracy's team is our United States Army, a high-spirited organization that offers unequaled opportunities to modern young men and women. Today... The Army has a new career program in operation that permits you to choose your own course of training in the skill that best suits your aptitudes and interests. So we suggest you find out about it soon by visiting your nearest United States Army recruiting station. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Man Who Used His Head. <laughs> Hey, Larry, did you get the scoop? Yeah, I got it, and you won't like it. Let's have it anyway. I'm braced. Close the door. All right, boy, what gives? Well, I was um, just supposed to be there to get any papers they wanted. I couldn't get too interested. Yeah, I know, but you didn't miss a trick. Oh, right? uh-uh, I didn't. I'm telling you, Sergeant Clark, I really felt sorry for Lieutenant Young. It'll be last year all over again. Captain Carl. Oh, no, not Captain Carl. Yeah, the oh. same Sharpie. He's against us. He's going to run the aggressors again. Holy mackerel. I thought he went back to the States. Yeah, so did I. It comes out that he's to stay in Japan for six months more. And let's face it, he's the best man around here to captain an aggressor force on a maneuver. The lieutenant didn't know the difference. When they announced that Captain Carl would oppose us, Lieutenant Young got up and went over and wished him luck. Sure, that's typical. He's a nice guy. But he doesn't know Captain Carl and what happened last year. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did they say where they're going to have us fight these aggressors? Uh, maybe it'll be somewhere else. Maybe Captain Carl won't know the ground. Oh, wishful thinking. Here goes your bubble. Huh? They said the Japanese government is giving us the same area. In fact, Captain Carl himself says, he says, Corporal Stevens, bring us the maps of the area around Fuji Yoshida. That cinched it, same place. Oh, the poor lieutenant. How well do I remember? Two o'clock in the morning. Everything was fine. We had double security. I placed the guards myself. And wham! Aggressors all around, capturing everybody, even the major. Man, what a mess. And we still don't know how he did it, where he came from. Larry, what can we do? This Lieutenant Young, he, he doesn't deserve this happening to him. A year out of West Point, just married. Yeah, plus the fact that you'll be his right-hand man. Yeah, and about ready to get amputated. I bet he thinks I let him down when it happens. He won't understand that we never did know how Captain Carl and his aggressors were able to get us without being detected. Men, we've been challenged. It appears that Captain Carl of A Company is very sure of himself. Now, this man is a roll of magnetic tape. It arrived today. I played it back a few minutes ago over in the T.I. and E. office. Corporal Stevens, does that tape machine still work? Uh, yes, Lieutenant. It's ready to go. I was going to use it. Well, put this reel of tape on, please. Now, men, apparently the rest of this battalion thinks this will be no contest. I've been told by other officers and Sergeant Clark here that we haven't got a chance. Body on me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ready, sir. I thank you. Now, I want you all to listen carefully. Turn it on, Corporal Stevens. 
This is Captain Carl of A Company, extending his greetings to the men of B Company. I've just learned that A Company will again be an aggressive force and will have the mission of capturing or destroying B Company. This is indeed a painful task. Last year, after A Company completely wiped out B Company and captured all the officers and the secret files, we were stricken with remorse. After all, you aren't a real enemy. You're soldiers, like ourselves. Men of the same country, the same regiment, the same battalion, but, unfortunately, not the same company. And now we learn that we must do it again. And our hearts, here in A Company, are heavy indeed. We're very sorry that we must Again, do this to you. Oh, what do you mean? Well, it seems that we're considered captured before we start. Now, Sergeant Clark here is going to ask for volunteers for guard duty during this maneuver. Now, those men who offer to stand guard will be expected to do the finest, the most alert job of being sentinels that this Army's ever seen. Then we have a chance. Those of you who want this detail, stand up. You bet. Holy cow, Lieutenant. Everybody's standing up. Thank you. Everybody in the company is a self-appointed sentinel. That's fine. I think Captain Carl is going to have a tussle on his hands this trip. Hurt. Hurt. All right, rest, fellas. Take a break. Hey, do you um, think the Lieutenant faked that recording? Oh, no. That was Captain Carl's voice, all right. You know, I think the Lieutenant pulled a good trick. He used the recording against A Company by letting the men hear it. It got them all riled up. Well, it'll take more than that. I want to tell you something when this class is over. Okay, I'll be in my room. Come in. Well, I think I've got it, Sarge. Uh-huh. You don't sound interested. No, I'm trying to figure some kind of a rotating defense at night. Now, we're going to get in places where a smart, aggressive patrol can infiltrate. That's how they did it last year. They infiltrated. They laid low, and next night they took our sentries from behind. You're wrong. Yeah? How? I think it was an inside job. Nah, never happened. Well, now, listen, Sarge. Suppose a smart company commander knows that he can pull back with no danger, get off some land without really losing an advantage. Yeah. So we leave some men behind, hidden men. Ah, nah. All right, all right. Answer this. Where did Captain Carl serve in World War II? Uh, Holland, I think. Yeah, you're right. Now, what was the favorite German trick in Holland? Remember, it was marshy. They couldn't dig in too well. I don't know. I'll tell you. The Germans used to hide men in haystacks, all the way into the center of a haystack. During the night, they'd crawl out and rally at a predetermined spot. Then they'd cut down our patrols and our outposts, and bingo, the Germans would attack and come right through. Yeah, I wish you were right. It'd be great to catch them, but, kid, there's no haystacks around oh, here. so no haystacks. So what? The principle I'm thinking about. There's Japanese houses on this land, aren't there? Look, there's houses, but we don't go near them during maneuvers. It's a directive. If you were an enemy and you knew that the people you were fighting weren't allowed to go into the natives' houses, where would you hide? Yeah, but it isn't uh, go on, really... Go uh, on, It isn't really a war. Yeah, not really a war. That's why you lost last year. Captain Carl acted as though it were a real war. He was loaded for bear. He acted the way he would if your, uh, our company was really an enemy. He used his head. Now all we got to do is use our heads. You're so right. Yeah. And that poor lieutenant, his first company. Yeah. We ought to help him. So now we find out if I'm right. If I'm right, if Captain Carl and his aggressors really hid in Japanese houses we couldn't search, the first thing we must do is confirm it. Find out if he did that. And then, old buddy, we got him blocked. Then we find out how to trick him. Psychological warfare. <laughs> Hey, sounds like the whole company's in there already. Well, the lieutenant had some real pep medicine for us. 
Just because we know how the Carl Raiders tricked us last year doesn't mean that we have the better cards this year. And so, my good men of inferior right, I tell you that if you do KP with a hearty will and polish your shoes, you'll be a sergeant too, like me. Hey, am I hearing things? That was you in there and you're here. Yeah, that's Petroni. There is the best imitator I have ever heard, but there's the first time I ever heard him imitate me. Listen. No, Sergeant Clark, I say no advisedly. Also, you are stupid. Everybody knows I should be a sergeant, not you. I can't believe it. That guy in there sounds more like me than I do. Yeah, you see what I mean? He's clever. I just can't get mad at the guy. Uh, let's get in and start the meeting. Well, now, oh, all right, all right. Hold it down, boys. Hold it down. Fellas, we got a chance now. We discovered how the aggressors worked last year. Now, briefly, it was like this. Now, our company was defending on land that had Japanese farmhouses on it. And our instructions were to stay away from the farmhouses. But the aggressors didn't have any such instructions. So, when they had a chance, they hid men in them. All right, now, what does this prove, huh? It proves that modern maneuvers, and war itself, for that matter, can't be fought with set rules. Now, last year, we lost because we didn't check on what the enemy might do. We only knew what we couldn't do. Oh, that means we start even then. Maybe. Now, Captain Carl seems to be just as confident as he was last uh, year. May I say something? Sure. Something the lieutenant told me that I want to pass on. A company is the aggressor company. We're to be attacked. Now, I'm thinking that we ought to dream up something to help... Lieutenant Young's idea of being a real defensive force. He said that a real alert defensive force will attack after it is attacked, providing it doesn't leave itself open by doing it. Petroni, are you paying attention? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking out loud. I was uh, thinking we could mail all the men in A Company three-day passes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Petroni, you've got yourself a job. We'll do it. We'll outfox them, and it'll work. I've got an idea that'll bring the whole aggressor force right into our lines, right where we can capture them. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Man Who Used His Head. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young men of America, your army now has an operation, a training program that permits you to choose your own branch and train in the particular job of your own choice. It's called the Reserved for You Training Program, and it works this way. If you're a high school graduate of service age, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and make application for the Reserved for You Training Program, stating your preferences of branch and training course. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, you're awarded a letter that guarantees you a reserved seat in the technical training course of your choice. Now, all this takes place before you enlist, and it places you under no obligation whatsoever. We suggest you find out about it right away by visiting your nearest United States Army recruiting station and talking it over with the friendly people there. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Man Who Used His Head. Yeah, I meant what I said. I said I got an idea that'll knock the aggressors apart. Hey, where'll I put this tape recorder? It's heavy. Right here on the table. Uh -huh. There you are, Sarge. Now what? Petroni, how much time do you need to give a perfect imitation of anybody's voice? Oh, about three listenings. Unless a guy has a tricky accent. Uh -huh. Three listenings. Mm -hmm. How long is that? Well, a grade A, no accent voice has a listening of about an hour. About three hours, then, ordinarily. Like my voice, yeah. I heard you imitating me. How long did it take you to get my voice down cold? Well, look, Sarge, I'm sorry. That was just oh, a joke. Oh, it's all right, Stowe. I know it was a joke. I'm not sore. 
I just want to get these times figured. You see, it fits in with my idea on how to win the maneuver. Well, uh, say four hours at the outside. Depending on how long I got to talk, if it's a few sentences, it's easy. If it's a longer imitation, I got to study. Yeah, sometimes people aren't consistent. They say some words one way and some others another way. I see. All right. Turn on the tape machine. This is Captain Carl of A Company, extending his greetings to the men of B Company. I've just learned that A Company will again be an aggressive force. Petroni, can you imitate that? No, sir. No? Uh -uh. Why not? This boy isn't going to imitate any officer. That's a court-martial offense. No, sir, not this boy. Now, uh -huh. wait a minute. When they say imitate an officer, it means dress like one. It means wear his rank and insignia, his yeah. uniform. But the regulations don't refer to a voice imitation. Yeah, but, Sarge, you can't prove that. How do you like that? I dream up an idea and you go soft on it. Yeah, but look... Now, listen! This will be an exercise. It'll be mock combat. Now, we're supposed to conduct ourselves as if it were really war. Now, if it really was a small-scale war, Captain Carl would be the enemy commander, wouldn't he? Now, would regulations forbid you to imitate an enemy commander? Uh, uh, no, no, I won't imitate Captain Carl. All right, how about after the exercise starts? After it starts? Well, then, then it's okay. All right, that's a help. But how will you know whether you've gotten his voice right or wrong? Well, I... Uh... No, no, Sarge, I won't do it. Oh, wait, uh, suppose you get permission from Lieutenant Young to imitate Captain Carl. Permission from Lieutenant Young? Well, uh... Well, then maybe... What if the lieutenant orders you to do it? Orders me to do it? No sweat. I do it. All right, all right. Over to the lieutenant we go. Unless I am off my rocker, we're all set. I don't get the point, Sarge. Well, uh, I don't want to tell you too much, lieutenant. You see, uh, I want to surprise you a little. Do you have it all planned? In my head. You really think it'll give us an edge? Yes, sir, if you'll okay the imitation. Now, take my word, it won't get anybody in trouble. And I'll be able to complete my plan. Well, I don't quite follow, but that doesn't mean you haven't the germ of a good idea. Petruni, go ahead and practice that imitation of Captain Carl's voice. Well, if you say so, sir, I hope Captain Carl takes it, Rick. He will. At least, I think he will. I hope you're right. <laughs> Come on, one more time. Let's hear it. Look, I'm telling you, it's good. I ought to know. Maybe you think it's good, but it isn't perfect. It's got to be perfect. Come on, let's go. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> this is Captain Carl of A Company addressing you. I want you to listen carefully to what I have to say. I will repeat it once, and then I want it done. This is Captain Carl of A Company. That's that. great, great. You've got his voice cold. It's great. When I do it, I start sweating. I, I don't like it. The lieutenant said it was all right now, didn't he? Uh, yeah, but Forget still, it. I... Forget it. Now, tomorrow morning, we're supposed to get word that the aggressive forces are advancing. When that happens, this is what we're going to do. Roger and out. Now well, they're only doing the expected, yes, sir. Sergeant Clark says that they won't try anything until Captain Carl thinks we're tired. I expect anything now. Acknowledge an aid chief over and out. What was that? That was Gray's voice. He's over with the first platoon. Hey, wait a minute. I want it. Lieutenant, call him. Quick. Red Abel. This is A Chief. Come in. Over. This is Red Abel over. We just received your acknowledge. What are you acknowledging? Your instructions said to move to the right 100 yards over. Move to the right? Who told you to move to the right? You're leaving a gap we have no defense for right now. Who gave the order? Over. Sir, we thought it was from you. It just came in. Over. Holy mackerel, Lieutenant. Captain Carl's on our frequency. That's not fair, sir. They weren't issued walkie-talkies. Well, they weren't, but they evidently have some of ours. That's legal. That's war. Sir, if this keeps up, we don't get any sleep. There'll be something happening every minute. This is A, Chief. 
We no longer transmit in the clear. I say again, we observe radio silence. The enemy has our frequency and probably some of our machines. Over and out. I don't think they'll try anything else tonight. It's near morning. Nobody has slept, sir. That's where the attacker has the advantage. He can pick away at the defenses using only a part of his men. The rest sleep and get ready for the morning. In our case, nobody sleeps. Because we haven't figured out what the aggressors will do. In the morning, we'll find out where he is. Then we'll know just what to do. Sergeant Clark. Stevens? Yeah. Oh, I beg your pardon, Lieutenant. I didn't see it. Sarge, I, I sent out three patrols like you wanted. It's a good thing we did. The aggressors are digging mortar positions on the ridge behind us. Behind us? They must have dog-trotted all night around our perimeter to get there. We don't move. The umpires will declare us all casualties as soon as it's light. Well, we'll just about make it. How about two squads, sir? Right. Uh, uh, sir, there were a lot of them. If we want to clean them out real quick, I think we should use more men. He's right, sir. Well, I thought of that, but I also thought that this might be a diversion. Draw our men out of position. Well, sir, all I can say is that there were a lot of them. Well, I'll chance it. Get the third platoon. There's a runner about 30 yards back. He'll take you to the platoon command post. Right, sir. This will be the patrol leader from the second patrol. He's right on time. And you, Sergeant Clark? Right. What did you find? Well, there's a gap he could drive the Empire State Building through. They're grouping for a daylight attack. I marked you on my map. You got a flashlight? Yeah. Get under this blanket. See, they're forming to attack with two columns. Now, if we drive a wedge through here, we can circle in two loops and cut them up. It'll be all over, practically. Sir, that'll take a lot of men. Yeah, too many. Well, I can't commit more than one platoon. We must keep a platoon here. I'm going to take a gamble. Two platoons committed and only one to hold the positions. Clark, get the runners in here. Get the third platoon on the road. Make sure this map goes along to Sergeant Jackson. You know what to tell him? Yes, sir. Where are you, Lieutenant? Here, to your left. They're on their way. It'll be light soon. Oh, it's been a rough night. You know, Sergeant, if Captain Carl has us decoyed, we're sitting ducks. What do you mean, sir? Two platoons committed. If he's fainted. If he really hasn't been on the ridge with mortars and isn't forming two columns for an advance march to attack, we're sunk. He'll be somewhere else. Yeah, but the patrol's reported. Ah, sometimes it's easy to fake in the dark. I'm beginning to get suspicious. Sir, I certainly hope you're wrong. We can't get licked, not two years in a row. Before I let that happen, I'll pull my double whammy. Double whammy? Yeah, I've got an ace in the hole, sir. You remember Petroni's imitation of Captain Carl? Yes, you may have something there, Sergeant. Yeah, for the last ditch stand, just in case things go bad. Well, keep it handy, Sergeant. Keep it handy. Listen, somebody's coming. Stevens? Yeah, yeah, it's the lieutenant here. Right here. Sir, bad news. Oh, no. Spill it. The platoon going up on the ridge to capture the mortars. They're pinned down, sir. I kept contact by telephone just in case, and it was in case. The aggressors wanted me to see the mortars. Then they moved in on both sides with machine guns. The platoon can't move, and there aren't many aggressors needed to hold them. I'm afraid we've lost a platoon, and they're doing it all with a few men. Oh, no. Oh, that means that we're probably surrounded on the front, too. When we went out to move through that gap, they closed in. The same trick in front and back. Exactly. So oh, it's all over. They'll swarm over us. The umpires will declare us outgunned at dawn. No, they won't, sir, because here goes the last card, the trump card. I've had Petroni hanging around all night just in case. Come on. Over here. Hey, Petroni. Come on, Hanson. We got a little job for you. Uh-huh. What? Come on, come on, come on. Snap out of it. Oh. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. I- I'm awake. But, Tony, listen. Uh-huh. We're about ready to get going on our little stunt. This will give us a chance to get out of trouble. Go ahead. We can't be any worse off. <laughs> They're attacking us. All right, now, Petroni, do your stuff, boy. Break like Captain Carl. Men of the aggressive forces, we've won again. There's no use making an attack. Come on over and see the finish. See the surrender. You deserve it. Come right on over and see the surrender ceremony. How's that, Sarge? Great, great. <clears throat> Let's get moving, men. We've got to get a hot breakfast. It's all over. Well... 
That's that. How do we do? I don't know in a minute, sir. It's just about daylight. Look! Look, Lieutenant! What? Two columns. Aggressors. Right. It worked. It worked! They're marching with their hands behind their heads. Patroni! Patroni! Our little friend came through, sir! The whole aggressor company with their hands behind their heads. Clark, keep enough men to guard the prisoners. Work over and behind the aggressors. Holding down our platoon. Split off here and move through these woods. That'll take the rest of them where they may be weakest. They'll be caught in crossfire. That's clever, sir. Well, what was clever was that Patroni trick. <laughs> Here they come with Captain Carl. He must have been with them. Oh, you don't know how happy this makes me. Uh, greetings, Captain. I don't have a sword to present. We'll skip it this time. Well, I guess I deserved it. Who thought it up? Sergeant Clark here. Aha, uh -huh. yes, yes. I remember Sergeant Clark. Sergeant, how are you? Nice going. Thank you, sir. Now I, uh, I want to meet that man on the loudspeaker. Private Patroni? Yes, sir. Here he is, Captain. Uh, Captain, uh, Sergeant Clark ordered me to do it. Relax, Patroni. May a captured officer request a demonstration? Of course. Go ahead, Patroni. <clears throat> Men of A Company, this is indeed an auspicious occasion. Here I am captured after I promised I wouldn't be. <laughs> you know, I can't believe it. He sounds just like me. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sergeant Clark, bless him, thought it up. My whole company walked right into your hands. and You didn't use a gun. No. I just had a sergeant who used his head. There are lots of things I could tell you about the United States Army, and they're all good reasons why you should enlist. But if you want to be really convinced, I suggest you talk with a career soldier. He's a man who's making a life job of it, and he already knows that he's got a job that can't be beat. If there aren't any career soldiers around handy in your particular community, the next best thing is to visit your local United States Army recruiting station. They'll be glad to show you all the opportunities for you when you enlist in the United States Army. Your investment in the future of your country will start paying dividends to you right away, and the sooner you're in, the sooner your benefits begin. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly we hail.